Well, all eyes are on New Hampshire. If folks there get ready to vote in the nation's first primary, joining me now, Congressman Marsha Blackburn. I'm so happy, first of all, to have you in studio. Good to be here. Uh, you and I talked earlier, and I found it fascinating that you, what you were telling me what you're hearing from voters, because you spent a lot of time pressing the flesh and talking to folks. And what is it that you're hearing that maybe we don't know in the media or we're not articulating enough? Well, this is definitely the year of the outsider. And people hope that they realize this is the year of constituents lecturing elected officials. And they're looking to be sure that they are heard and that there is an action taken, that there is a deliverable. They are sick of this. And as we discussed earlier, I had a constituent that stood up in a town hall meeting and he said, Hey, Marsha, the deal is people are tired of being broke. And I think there's a lot to it. You've got three issues people talk about, national security, jobs and economic security, and retirement security. But what about the notion that, that the GOP, the establishment GOP, I don't know if you want to put yourself in that bracket or not, but uh, you know, the folks that have been in, in Washington for a long time have simply let down ordinary people. Well, that is why they're standing up and lecturing elected officials. And some of us have been in Washington for a while, but we've kind of been the outsider and trying to change the way so the system works. So you're saying there's some validity to that then? Yes, absolutely there is. Because people feel as if we're not getting things done. If you don't have, an, have a budget and you don't appropriate the money and the uh, Congress doesn't have their Article One power and the power of the purse, then you're ceding that authority to the administration. And when you do, look at what's happened with $19 trillion worth of debt. People are saying, get this fixed. Get it fixed now. But even with that, even when the, the GOP has the House and the Senate, yeah. it still feels like things are bogged down. You've, you've, sure. you've got bills that you've been trying to get through that sound to me to be amazing, common sense stuff, stuff in the right direction. And even then, with the power structure the way it is on both sides of the aisle, it's still tough to get things done. It is tough to get things done. And the House and the Senate need to do a better job working together. Speaker Ryan, I think, is going to bring uh, a little bit more power to getting those things done. And yes, there are bills that some of us have worked on across state line purchase of health insurance. I've had that bill seven years working on it. Uh, a Medicare choice to let seniors stay with their health care and not be forced into Medicare. That's another seven year no project. Brainer. Just two no yeah. and just, uh. Right. So it does take a while and you have to build consensus for that. But we have to have the House and the Senate working together and an administration that will say, I hear you. I hear the American people, and yes, indeed, we're going to get something done. Speaking of hearing, uh, lessons that professional politicians in Washington, D.C. should be learning from Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders. Uh, they need to be learning right away that results matter. Uh, not necessarily experience, but results, and being able to give results. Show what you can, what you can do, and then don't talk about yesterday talk about tomorrow and where you're going to take the country and let people understand that you stand on appropriate experience, but don't lead with that. You're very excited about this Trump candidacy, aren't you? Uh, Trump, Cruz, Rubio, outsiders. I think it's an outsider yeah. year. I think it's good for the country. So do I. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Appreciate thanks. it. You're, you're one of my favorites. I'm glad you made it in. Thank